know whom the Son has set free is truly free indeed. Do we have any free people in the room? Let me hear you make some noise. I said, let me hear you make some noise like you're free. Come on, we can do better than that. Open your mouths and bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord. I said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is a God that's worthy and deserves our praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Come on, say, I give you my dance. I give you my dance.
Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! It is to you I give my worship. It is to you I give my praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. Help us shut Oh, 
love you and we praise you. We magnify your name, Lord God, because you alone are worthy. We give you the glory and honor and praise, God. recognize 633 even now as we seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness Lord God and we know everything else will be added Lord God but we're seeking you now we're seeking you first in everything that we do Lord God we seek you first in every aspect of our life Lord and we give you the glory the honor and the praise now, Lord God, we ask you to touch the man of God as he delivers the word tonight. Speak through him. Use him for your glory. Open our ears and our hearts, Lord God, so that we can receive. Lord God, so that we can leave change. So that we can leave change. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. We say amen. everybody with lifted hands talk to him tonight why are you here tonight talk to the Lord tell him why you came tell him why you're here tell him why you're watching have your way God have your way God Like a leaf in the wind, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way. Everybody, don't be a spectator tonight. Have your way.
If you can stand up on your feet, just stand up with me right now, wherever you are. We're going to just lift up the next generation. We're going to lift up our kids. I want to put that responsibility on everybody right now. Lift up your voices. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit in this place, Sunday night floor, feel free to pray in other tongues. We're going to intercede for the next generation right now. Those watching us online. Come on, lift up your voice right now. Let's pray for the next generation. Mm. 
Maradole Kebranaka. Come on, everybody, lift it up and notch right now. Come on, everybody. In anata le kebra zoto branaka bala tele benikra la bala. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory tonight. We lift up the next generation. We pray over them that your power is touching them, that your power is healing them, that your power is setting them free tonight. We give you praise and glory. Let your name be exalted in this place tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And the whole body of Christ in this place says a big amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord Jesus the biggest clap offering. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to two or three people and greet them right now as you take your seats in his presence. Amen and amen. Have your way, Lord. How you doing tonight? I said, how you doing tonight? Praise God. Well, welcome to 6, M633 Church tonight. This will be our third service. Looking forward to great things that God is doing. Can somebody say amen to God? We give all the praise and the glory. And I want to say this up front. We want to welcome all of you watching online from wherever you're watching from all over the world. We're so excited to have you all watch us uh, tonight. Um, I heard that the prayers at 5 p.m. Was, was strong and amazing. My boo led uh, prayers at 5 p.m. And that's what we want to do. Just know that at 5 p.m. every Sunday night in this place, the doors will be open for you to come and have some time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're not, um, we don't want to be carried away with contemporary Christianity that we lose the presence of God. For us, the presence of God is everything. Can somebody say amen? And it's, it's in the secret place. You know, um, different people have different uh, aspects of worship and how they worship God. One of the things I know is you only get out of your worship what you put into it. God never made you a spectator. God made you a participator. You've got to participate with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with everything that you came with. Amen. Turn to one person and say, we do not give God our leftovers. We don't even give God our best. We don't even give God our best. Let's try that again. Okay. Say this to somebody else. Say, we do not give God our leftovers. And we do not even give God our best. We come to give God our everything. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. All right, people. How many of you are ready for the word? All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, last Sunday night, I taught on righteousness by faith. We are under the series faith that overcomes the world um, and I think we're going somewhere with this series the end goal of this series is to radically develop a spirit of dominion in each and every one of you we want you all to walk around um, with a spirit of victory a spirit of dominion a spirit of an overcomer can somebody say amen and tonight we're going to be addressing the subject how to assess all things by faith how to assess all things by faith. Can somebody say amen? amen? All right. If you will, open with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 21. You all said you're ready for the word, right? Yes. Amen. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I'm reading this in the King James Version. All right. And... Um, if you don't mind, at the count of two, let's read. One, two, go. For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus was made seen for us, that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So God is not making you righteous. God has made us righteous. Can somebody say amen? I say God is not making us righteous. He has already made us righteous. Don't look at me. Look at the word. For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. How was he made seen? 
he was made sin with our sins. The Bible says, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. So the Father took the sins of the whole world and laid it upon his own son. And he bore it for us as our substitute. Okay? That's how he was made sin. He was made sin with our sin. Say that with me. He was made sin with our sin. One more time. He was made sin with our sin. All right? Now, you all know you have the permission to respond louder than that, right? Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to try that again, okay? So, he was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the thing here is, you've already been made righteous. I want to say that again. You've already been made righteous. Say after me, I'm righteous. Say it like you know it. Say, I'm righteous. And I'm righteous. Say that, I'm righteous with his righteousness. So let me ask you this. How righteous are you? How righteous are you? You're as righteous as your uncle. You're as righteous as your nephew and nieces. You're, you're, you're as righteous as your pastor. You're as righteous as the one who gave you his righteousness. You better believe that. You are as righteous as Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He made you righteous in himself. Can somebody say hallelujah? I want to show you something here else. Look at Matthew chapter 8 verses 17. In Matthew chapter 8 verses 17, I'm going to read this in the New King James Version. Matthew 8, 17 says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So Jesus was not only made sin with our sin, he was made sick with our sicknesses. The same way that he carried the sins of the whole world is the same way that he carried the sicknesses and the diseases of the whole world. Himself took. He's not taking it. He's already taken it. He took it. He's not taking it. He took it. Okay? He's already taken it upon himself. All our sicknesses, all our diseases were laid upon him just like our sin was laid upon him. Okay? So he not only redeemed us from sin, he also redeemed us from sicknesses and diseases. He, we were made righteous with his righteousness. But you see, Jesus was made sin. How? The father took the sins of the whole world and laid it upon his own son. So let me ask you this question. Do you believe that Jesus was made sin? Do you believe that Jesus became sin for us? Talk to me, church. Do you believe that? So if he was made sin, then I was made righteous. Do you get it? If he was literally made sin, the Bible says God has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So if he was made sin with my sin, then I was made righteous with his righteousness. The same way, if he was made sick with my sickness, I am made whole with his wholeness. Oh, you got to get this. The question is, how righteous are you? You are as righteous as the one who gave you his righteousness. How healthy are you? You as whole as the one who gave you his wholeness. I'm telling you right now. And that's something. You as healthy as God himself. You are healthy as God himself. But you see you got stuff in your head that you got to have to battle with to believe that. If, you've, if you're one of those who have had one sickness after the order for years and years and years. Your life experiences will end up forming what we call a stronghold in your mind. And that stronghold impedes you from believing the truth of God's word. That you are not only made righteous with his righteousness, you are also made whole with his wholeness. That actually and in fact you are as healthy as God himself. You really are. All right. In Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 in the New King James Version, I want to show you these things because we're going somewhere with this. This is how to accept all things by faith. It says, Christ.
laws, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So not only was he made seen with my sin, and in exchange I was made righteous with his righteousness, we were also made sick with his sickness, and in exchange I was made whole with his wholeness. He was made a curse with my curses. God, God took all the curses, the curses from breaking the law, and placed it on his son in exchange that you and I might receive the blessing of Abraham. See, all these scriptures, these are the only four scriptures where you always see this life of this great exchange between God and man. He takes your sin. He gives you his righteousness. He takes our sicknesses. He gives you his health. He takes the curse and he places upon you the blessing. Right? This is how you see it. Let me show you one more scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 9. I'm also reading this in the New King James Version. It says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might become rich. So Jesus wasn't poor, but he became poor for our sake, so that in exchange you might be rich with his richness. One of these days, this truth is going to dawn on somebody here. That he took your sin and in exchange, he gave you his righteousness. That he took our sicknesses and in exchange, he gave you his wholeness. That he took the curse and in exchange, he gave you the blessing. How blessed are you? The blessing of the Lord that make it rich and adds no sorrow. How blessed are you? you as blessed as the one who gave you his blessing. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. I need somebody to respond tonight. Say, I'm blessed. Not only that, he took our poverty. I said he took our poverty. And in exchange of taking your poverty and my poverty, in exchange for taking that, he gave you his wealth. How wealthy are you? Church, how wealthy are you? Oh, I said how wealthy are you? This is what I want us to do. Look at that 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 9. Let's stay there for a minute. Okay? We're going to read this together. All right, we're going to read this together. Brothers and sisters, as loud as you can, at the count of two, please, one, two, go. Let's read. For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, hold on, he was poor. He was poor. Talk to me, church, he was poor. He was what? He was what? Yet for our sakes he became what? Poor. For what reason? That you through his poverty might become rich. Why would Jesus bear the sins of the whole world? So that I don't have to bear it. I said, why would Jesus take all upon himself the iniquity of us all? So that sin doesn't have to have dominion over you. I said, sin doesn't have to have dominion over you. I want to say that again. I said, sin doesn't have to have dominion over you. Can somebody say Hallelujah. So why do some people struggle with sin? Because it hasn't dawned on them that Jesus took upon himself the sins of the whole world. And because he took it, you don't have to keep it. Jesus took upon himself the sicknesses and the diseases of the whole world. Why? You know, sometimes I hear people say, well, you know, Paul went through this and, and David went through this and, and, and Moses went through this. Listen, turn to somebody and say, you're not Moses, you're not Paul, and you're not Samson. You're none of them. The ultimate example would never be Paul. As great as Paul was, as amazing as Moses was, thank God for all these people. I'm sure there are things we can learn from their life, but Jesus will always be the ultimate example. Can somebody say Hallelujah. And I've made up my mind that whatever I can't see in him, you can't see in me. I said, whatever you can't see in him, you cannot see in me. I can't imagine Jesus on a hospital bed. I just, my mind can't go that far. I, I can't see him hook up with, with needles and, and crying out, nurse, nurse. I, I just can't see him do that. 
And because I can't see it, it's not for me. I said, because I can't see it in him, it's not for me. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Praise God. So for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus, even though he was rich, he became poor so that you and I don't have to be poor another day in your life. Okay? Did you know that the moment you become born again, these four things need to become your reality. Redemption from sin, redemption from sickness and diseases, redemption from the curse, and redemption from poverty. One at the same time. Let me show it to you. In Psalms 105 verses 37. Psalms 105 verses 37. This is an Old Testament typology, but let's read it. It says, he also brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among his tribes. So the night that God brought Israel out of Egypt, the very same night that he brought them out of a 430 year bondage, the Bible says that he brought them out also with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among them. The Living Bible puts it this way. I like how the Living Bible puts it. It's so exciting that I want us to read it together. Okay. Let's look at this in the Living Bible. Psalms 105 verse 37. Brothers and sisters, let's read together. One to go. And he brought his people safely out from Egypt, loaded with silver and gold. There were no sick and weak ones among them then. Under the old covenant, he brought them out loaded. I say he brought them out loaded. The same night they came out of Egypt, they were what? Somebody better talk to me tonight. I said, they were what? They were loaded. The moment you got born again, whether you knew it or not, you were loaded. You were loaded. And that's something that he'll bring them out loaded. And with all that being loaded with silver and gold, they had no place to spend that money. Because God wanted to show them it is not by power or by might. That the, your job will never be your source. Your bank account will never be your source. That God himself will be your source. The same night, he brought them out loaded with seven gold. Now, I want to show you some things here. So, I was made righteous. So, why don't I look righteous? Why don't I act righteous? Why don't I live righteously? I was made whole, but why is it that from time to time my body is ravished with one form of sickness or the other? I've been redeemed from the curse, but sometimes my life looks like it's under a curse. I've been made rich with his richness, and yet majority of the body of Christ lives in poverty. So what is the missing link here? What is missing here? What is amiss? I want to show you what's amiss. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4 verses 2 please. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 2. I'm going to read this in the King James Version. It says, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. It's talking about them in the wilderness. Them that came out of Egypt. Moses preached the gospel unto them like the gospel has been preached to all of you tonight. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So they heard the word of deliverance. They heard the word of healing. They heard the word of freedom. But the word they heard did not profit them. Why? Because they did not mix what they were hearing with faith. So faith becomes the missing element in this whole equation. And tonight what I want to walk you through is how to assess all things in the kingdom of God by faith. By faith. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. By faith. So let's say this. How many of you believe 
I'm using this example because I feel like this is the best way you can relate with this. How many of you believe you're loaded with silver and gold? Let me see your hands up. How many of you believe that he was made poor so that through his poverty you might be made rich? So the question is, was he made poor? Was he made poor? Talk to me, church. Was he made poor? So are you rich? Are you rich? Let me come over this side. I said, are you rich? Hmm. You're rich. So let me say, somehow, I, somebody just wakes up, or in the next few seconds, somebody just walks up to you and hands you over a billion dollars. You said you were rich, right? So let's say somebody comes to you and hands over to you a billion dollars and tells you, I just put a billion dollars in your checking account. And you open to your bank account and you're looking at your account and you discover that what he told you was absolutely true. There's a billion dollars that has, that has been deposited in your account. Tell me, how would that change your life? Let's say he put it at 2 a.m. in the morning when you couldn't go out to shop anywhere right here in Jackson, Mississippi. Because everything closes by 9 p.m. That means you have to wait till sunlight to spend that money or some of that money. What would your attitude be like from that 2 a.m. till 10 a.m. when the shops open? I, I thought you just told me that you were rich. I bet the way you go to bed that night will be a way you've never gone to bed in your entire life. I bet if you happen to wake up, because <laughs> some of you will be so excited you may not make it the following day. If you, if you happen to wake up the following day, I bet the way you come out of your bed will be different. I bet the way you take your legs out and I bet your walk that morning will be so different. The way you will come out of your room. The way you will head over to the kitchen to make your, the way you will make your cup of coffee that morning will be so different. You will not be in a hurry. The way you would even stir the coffee, you'll be like, what, what are you all saying now? What are you all saying? <laughs> the way you drink it, you're not rushing anywhere. There's nothing bothering you anywhere on this planet. Your thought, your actions will be so different. But if you really believed you were rich, you see how we often deny the truth in our own actions. And the reason why we do that is because you never believed it. You thought you did, but you didn't. If you, uh, if you truly believed it, it will make no difference if you had it physically or not. The truth is not the truth until it shapes your thinking. The truth is not the truth until it shapes your actions. And this is where we are missing it. You're not mixing what you're hearing with the element of faith. You said you're as healthy as God. But in words, in thoughts, in actions, we deny it all. We are bought the truth. And I see this happen time and time again with God's people all over the world. The actions tell the heavens, I never believed it. Because if you believed it, you think it, you talk it, you walk it. And that is something that is really missing. So let me show you how this works. I want to show you how this works quickly. Hebrews 4, 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. What is this mixing of faith? What is this? Let me show you what it is. In Romans chapter 10, verses 10. Quickly turn there with me. Romans chapter 10, verses 10. 
I'm going to read this in the KJV. Romans 10 verses 10. All right, brothers and sisters. Let's read together, please, at the count of two. One to go. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want us to read that again, please. One to go. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So God comes to me and he says, I've made you righteous. God comes to me and says, I took your sicknesses and disease and in exchange, I've given you my health. God comes to me and says, I took upon myself the curse of the whole world. And in exchange, I gave you the blessing. I was made poor for your sakes so that you might be as rich as the one who gave you his wealth. So what's missing? Why are these truths not being realized in my life? I tell you why. Because of Romans chapter 10 verses 10. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now hear this. With the organ of the heart you believe. Say that with me. With the organ of the heart you believe. But with the organ of the mouth you confess. I want to say that again. With the organ of the heart you believe. With the organ of the mouth you confess. If these two things are missing, you are not mixing the message with faith. If your heart is not believing the truth unto righteousness, and if your mouth is not confessing the word unto salvation, then you have missed the mixing of faith. The mixing of faith involves the organ of the heart and the organ of the mouth. The mixing of faith involves these two organs. Now, so what does it mean to believe with the heart? Now, to believe with the heart, I'm not just believing with the heart to believe with the heart. I'm believing with the heart to arrive at a place called righteousness. Okay? Look at the word. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So I'm believing with the organ of my spirit until I arrive at a promised land called righteousness. Righteousness simply means taking sides with God. It means right standing with God. That means I come into a wholehearted agreement with God. If you say I'm righteous, then I am righteous. That's what it means. It means to come into a wholehearted agreement with God. I am who God says I am. If God says I'm righteous, hello people, I said if God says I'm righteous, until I believe it, I would never become it. So I am behaving my faith when I believe it. Until I believe it, I will never become it. Some of you want to become it before you believe it. <laughs> you want to feel righteous. You want to walk in righteousness before you fully accept the fact that God made you righteous. You're putting the cart before the horse. I am righteous with his righteousness. I've been called to believe it. I become it when I believe it. Not even when I see it. Not even when I experience it. Not even when I taste it. I become it the moment I believe it. This is how it works, people. You can never become what you don't believe. If God says I'm righteous, I said if God says I'm righteous. I said if God says I'm righteous, I am righteous. What is my responsibility? To believe. In other words, can two walk together except they agree? The first point before we even move forward is I got to come to a place of absolute agreement. God, I am what you say I am. And brothers and sisters, it's not based upon your experiences. Don't bring the word of God down to your experience. Bring your experience to level up with the word of God. This is where so many people get tripped. So I'm believing with the organ of my heart, with the organ of the spirit, 
unto righteousness. God says, I've taken your sicknesses. I've taken your diseases and I've given you my health. He's not taking it. He took it. And so if he took it, then where is it? Where is it? So I use the organ of the heart to believe his report. You say, but the doctor is showing me all this sickness and disease. In my I don't care what the doctor is showing me. I'm not ignoring what the doctor is showing me. I'm not denying what the doctor is showing me. But it's on the side of this fence called the fence of facts. It's a fact what the devil is showing I me, mean, what the doctor is showing me. But on this other side of the fence, the fence of truth. I am seeing what God is also showing me. And what God is showing me trumps what the enemy is showing me. What God is showing me trumps everything else that the world is showing me. Brothers and sisters, this is how it works. This is how it works. So a lot of people say, well, I have pain in my body. Oh, Lord, help us. And that's something. Let me ask you this. How many of you have ever gone sick before? Let me see your hands up. Okay, okay. how many of you have ever gone sick as a Christian before? What was your first reaction? Tell me, what was your first reaction? When you got sick, what was your first reaction? When your baby got sick, what was your first reaction? Parents, talk to me. Oh, don't, don't, you're, don't lie in church now, don't lie. What was your first reaction? The Bible says, oh, call the doctor. Thank you. Who said that? Call the doctor. Thank you. You know what the Bible says? It says, call for the elders of the church. Call for the elders of the church. Huh? Let them pray over you, anointing you with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he had committed any sins, the Lord will forgive him of that sin. How many of you, your first response is to call for the elders of the church? This is how far the church has drifted from the truth. There was a woman by the name Mrs. Edward Mix. You can buy her book. It's called Faith Cures uh, at Syracuse University in New York. That scripture in James chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 is any sick among you was the only scripture that God opened her to. That gave her a national healing ministry as an African American woman. And this was during slavery. Doctors would hand over what they used to call invalids, incurables. And even at a distance, just by reading the letter that she wrote, people were coming out of wheelchairs. God opened her eyes to James 5, 14 and 15. If any is sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Most of you know the names of your medications more than you know their names of the apostles. You're familiar with every one of them. That's far, how far we've drifted. Jesus made you whole. He's not making you whole. He's already made you whole. People of God, he's already made you whole. So the enemy comes and says, but there's pain. Pain or no pain, it doesn't change what God said. Sickness or no sickness, it doesn't change what God said. You're not mixing what you're hearing with faith. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. So with the organ of the heart, you believe unto righteousness. That means, God, if you say I'm righteous, I'm righteous. If you say I'm healed, I'm healed. If you say I'm rich, I am rich. So I'm not measuring my wealth by how much I have in the bank account. I'm not measuring my wealth by how much food I have in the pantry. I'm measuring my wealth by what God said. If God said it, that settles it for me. Can somebody say hallelujah? I say, can somebody say Hallelujah. All right. So in order for me to assess all things by faith, I have to believe with the heart that what God said is so. Right? 
After I believe with the heart, the next thing is what? I have to confess with my mouth until I arrive at a place called salvation. The word salvation there means sozo. It means the blessing. It means well-being. It means prosperity. It means all that is good. It's all included in that word salvation. Romans 10.10 10 again says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I'm believing unto righteousness, and I'm confessing unto salvation. That word salvation is the word sozo. It doesn't just mean saved from sin. It means saved from sin. It means saved from sickness. It means saved from the curse. It means saved from poverty. All included in that word, salvation. Wholeness, healing, deliverance, freedom. All included in that word, sozo. So the way I arrive at a place called sozo is I am confessing what I believe with my mouth. Can somebody say hallelujah? I'm confessing what I believe with my mouth. Now stay with me here. In Romans chapter 10, turn there with me if you will. Romans chapter 10, I want to read from verse 13 through verse 15. Romans 10, verse 13 through 15. We're talking about how to assess all things by faith in the kingdom of God. Romans 10, 13 through 15. All right, in the King James Version. And we're going to read this together, brothers and sisters. Let's read at the count of two, please. One, two, go. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Stop there. So in order for me to be saved, I have to do what? I have to call. In order for me to walk into sozo, I have to call or confess. Look at it. For whosoever shall call. On the name of the Lord shall be saved. So in order for me to experience salvation, I have to do what? Talk to me, church. I have to call. I have to call. Now notice what it says. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So I want, to, I want to experience salvation, healing, preservation, wholeness, the blessing, prosperity. But in order for me to do that, I have to call. But how do you call on him in whom you have not believed? So in order for me to get saved, I have to call. In order for me to call, I have to believe. So calling stems out of believing. I can't call if I don't believe. How can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So I cannot experience salvation until I call. I can't call until I believe. I can't believe until I hear. Are you getting this? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So let me put it this way. To be saved, you must call. To call, you must believe. To believe, you must hear. To hear, the gospel has to be preached. To preach it, you have to be sent. In order for me to get saved, I need to call. But in order for me to call, I have to believe. In order for me to believe, I have to hear. Because faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word. Okay? Hearing and hearing by the word. Now, this hearing, everybody say this hearing. In order for me to believe, I have to hear from God. Faith is not just hearing by the word. Faith is hearing from God. So in order for me to believe, I have to hear from God. Okay? This hearing is not the hearing with this ear. This hearing is with the inner ear. And it's taught by the Holy Spirit. 
when you hear from God, it produces in you what is known as faith. How can they believe except they hear? So hearing comes from hearing the voice of God. When God speaks to you, it produces faith in your spirit. So the hearing it's talking about here is not just the natural hearing, it's a communication by the Holy Spirit. Let me show it to you. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verses 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 verses 2. Alright. Everybody please let's read one to go. And the Spirit entered into me. Something happens when the word is coming forth. Something happens when, the, when God is communicating truth to you. Something happens when the word of God is coming your way. Look at what it says. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered. That entering in of the spirit is what produces faith in those who hear it. So this hearing is no ordinary hearing. It's a hearing from God that produces the faith that you need to believe. Is anybody getting this? I said, is anybody getting this? So in order to be saved, I must call. In order for me to call, I must believe. In order for me to believe, I must hear. In order for me to hear, the gospel has to be preached. And for the gospel to be preached, the person preaching has to be sent. I said the person preaching has to be sent. In John 3.34, let's turn there very quickly. John 3.34, it says, For he whom God sent speaketh the words of God. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. When somebody is sent to you, he must speak the words of God. The word here is, he speaks the very words that God puts in his mouth to speak. And as he speaks, the spirit enters into you. And that entering in of the spirit of God is what produces the faith that you need to believe. The answer here is this. Everything that God has done, he's already done it. God is not doing anything new. God is not trying to heal you. Church, I'm going to say this again. God is not trying to heal you. Mm -mm. God is not trying to make you righteous. God is not trying to lift the curse from you and bless you. You've been blessed. The moment you got born again, you were blessed. Okay? This is the problem. With the organ of the heart, you really haven't settled this. Because if you did, it would change the way you talk. It will change your confession. It will change it. See, when I, when I got born again, of course, you know, um, when we came back from England, yes, my parents were absolutely broke. And um, within a couple of years or so, he started out a company and became extremely wealthy. So I grew up in wealth in that sense. But when he gave me the ultimatum to turn my back on Christ or leave the house as somebody who was barely a teenager, I think I was 12 going on 13 at this time, um, it was no brainer for me. I walked out. And when I walked out, uh, I noticed people that would often mock me or laugh at me. They would say, your father has so much money. Here you are walking around like you are a pauper. Here you are walking around like you are a beggar. I would remember my, my, my uh, uncle and aunts coming in from America. And, and they would beg me. They say, just pretend like you're not even serving God. Just act, like, um, just act like you're not even reading your Bible. Okay, just pretend. Let your father see you through school. I said, absolutely not. I said, absolutely not. For almost a year, I had one set of clothes to my name. But I'm telling you, I felt like the wealthiest man on the planet. You couldn't tell me that I was poor. You couldn't tell me that. I felt like the richest man on the planet. Because it wasn't based on what I had or didn't have. 
it wasn't based on the physical. It was based on what I saw in the spirit. My future was so certain. And I said it was all humility. I was so sure of my future. <laughs> I was so sure. Nothing in the physical could change it. My current circumstances did not even have no impact on my life. And the greatest experience I've lived through all of that is uh, I am absolutely fearless when it comes to money. I have no fear. I don't even know what that means. I and I say this with all humility. I have no fear of lack. I have no fear. People have heard me say when I said God is the only parent that I know. How do you, why do I make statements like that? He really is. You're kicking out a 12-year-old in the streets. Where does he go? How did he live? How did I survive? Okay? All I know was if I got hungry, I said, God, thank you. Bread is coming tonight before I go to bed. Bread is coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Never worried about it. And as God is my witness, bread will come. I've seen God do this too many times to doubt him. I want to go someplace. I just get dressed. I'm telling you, God is my witness. Get into the shower, get dressed, get suited up, and just wait. And while I'm waiting, I'm saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. My transportation is here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. With no money in my pocket, thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Within a few minutes, somebody pulls up and says, where you're going? I said, I'm going to Sosa. He said, I'll take you. I said, oh. it wasn't even a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. Some of you be sh shocked that after I finished uh, college, you, you know, um, back then, uh, traveling overseas was, was a very big thing for those of us who lived in Africa. You know, when, when, when I just finished, I said, you know what? I want to go to London. Where's your money? God's got it. What do you mean God's got it? I said, I'm going. They thought I was joking. I was on campus that evening. Boarded a taxi to a city called Lagos. Got to Lagos while I was there. They said, what are you doing here? I said, I got my passport. I'm traveling to London with no money. <laughs> God is my witness with no money, with not a cent. The two days after that, a friend of mine says, I, I don't just know. I just feel like God is telling me to buy you a ticket to London. I said, uh, you heard right. You heard right. Uh, I was waiting for God in a city called <laughs> Lagos. I got into Heathrow Airport with one pound in my pocket. Forget it. I have walked with God. I'm telling you. Don't, don't let this fresh face fool you. Okay. <laughs> got into London with one pound. And I got into London knowing no soul. Think about that. Not a single soul on the planet. So what did I do? <laughs> well, um... I remember a friend of mine telling me, when you get there, I want you to call this, this particular person that I didn't know anywhere. You can imagine one pound in your pocket. There were phone booth there. You know, you could drop that pound in there and that's it, you know. <laughs> so I put the pound in. I called him. Uh, he said, yeah, um, I I'll come pick you up. So he came and picked me up. So when he picked me up, you know. I stayed at his place for a couple of days, and then one day the Spirit of the Lord asked me to ask him a question. I said, sir, do you know one John Ayabina? Me and John went to school together, you see, but John left abroad many, many years ago before I, I left, before I came. I said, do you know one John Ayabina? He said, of course. John Ayabina is my student. I, I mentored him in Bible college. I said, where is John? He said, oh, he's just right around the corner. I said, well, give him a call and tell him Sino is in town. So he gave him a call and, and told him Sina was in town. And of course, with joy and excitement, he ran down and said, Sina! Within two weeks, I was getting a call from the U.S. from my relatives. Those relatives that told me to turn my back on Jesus. When they heard that I had made it to London, they said, we know this boy. If we don't help him now, he's going to make it to the U.S. So they decided to send me a ticket to fly in. I came in during winter, didn't like the place, and left back for Africa. The point is, I knew that my future was so sure that nothing in my present circumstance could change the vision of my future. I'm telling you right now, 
is the same way that I know I am healed. Are you listening to me? I know that Jesus took this thing 2,000 years ago. So no current pain will change that. No current miracle verdict will change that. Never. 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 I literally think sickness is afraid of me. Because I've gone into the world so deep. I have gone in there. I saw Jesus take my sickness. I saw the whipping of his body. His body was broken in pieces. Broken in pieces. So that Sino, so that you, so that I, so that everybody, your family members don't have to bear the burden of sickness forever. I saw it. And so what do I say? I say, God, I am what you say I am. And every other thing is too elementary to change that. The way God explained this to me, and I was talking about this last Sunday, if, if God walked up to you and said, you are healed. God said that. Not your mama them said that. That's God saying it. Why would you need another proof? Th that's what people do. They, and so when they feel pain and they indulge that pain and give into that pain, you are actually exalting that pain above the word of God. You really are. God is the one saying to you, you are healed. Why would you need proof? Why isn't his word enough? God said you are healed. God said you are rich. I said, God said you are rich. The same way he told Joshua. He said, Joshua, I've given you that mountain. I've given you Jericho. He didn't say I was going to give it. He said, I've given it to you. He said, go take it. Like somebody who already knows it was given to him. Go take it. He looks at Abraham. When Abraham was a hundred years old, a hundred years old, he had developed some type of, uh, he, he had become important at this time. His wife was 90 years old and God is looking at this man and says, I've made you. I've made you the father of many nations. I'm not making you, I've made it. The Bible says, and Abraham believed God. And so Abraham did not preoccupy himself with the weakness of his own body. He didn't indulge it. He didn't, he didn't get consumed with the physical realities of his life. Instead, he got consumed with what God said. He got consumed with it, what God said. There are people who struggle with sin because they are consumed with life experiences. Instead of believing what God said, they are consumed with their life experiences. They said, you know, you have no idea. I went through this for the next 20 years. I know myself. I know, I know how my body responds. I know, I know myself. I know the scenes of my own soul. They're caught up with it. Instead of looking at the finished work of what Jesus has done and see him lift up your sin, bearing it on himself, freeing you from all sin, the punishment of sin, the guilt of sin, the pain of sin, all of that. Jesus has lifted it. And that's what you need to preoccupy yourself with. So this is how you assess all things. By faith, you believe with the heart. And once you believe, that means you come into right standing with God. Now, two can walk together because they've agreed. But then it says with the mouth. You don't stop there. The mouth. Everybody said the mouth. The mouth was not given to you to eat. That is not the primary function of the mouth. I know you thought that was the primary function, but that's not the primary function. The primary function of the mouth is to speak God's word. The word confession means homologia. It means say the same thing that God is saying. That's what it means. You believe with the heart. And then you say what God is saying. You say what God is saying. I said you say what God is saying. You know, I went to school... Never used my degree, sir, so never used it. Studied banking and financing, never used it one day. I knew that was not my path. I just did it to please a few people. 
And then I went ahead and got uh, two more degrees in theology, bachelor's. I didn't really need it. I say that with all humility. I did it to please the religious world so that they would say, you studied something. <laughs> it was not my path. But through the eyes of faith, I saw my future. And that future became more real. So no matter what came my way, my eyes, like Peter, was on Jesus. So with the organ of the heart, you believe. And with the organ of the mouth, you say. Everybody say, you say. The question is, how long should you confess the word of God? Forever and ever. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth. In Isaiah 51, 21, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your children, nor out of the mouth of your children's children, for henceforth and forever. Never stop talking the word of God. Because you will have whatsoever you say. Whatsoever you say. So I have learned. Even when I hit my toe against something. How many of you have hit that toe against something that hurts really well? My first reaction is, Jesus! Pain, subside. Pain, subside. I don't go cry. Ah, 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 ah. No, 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 no. I've been trained. Jesus! Touch it. This is very true. When I feel a sharp pain, Jesus! Just hit it. Jesus! I've learned. I've learned. When I open my uh, uh, account and there's nothing in there, I start dancing in the Holy Ghost. I am rich. 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 And as I dance and dance and rejoice, the peace of God that passes, that low level of understanding, elevates me above it and I begin to see things through the lens of God. Fresh oil comes on you and you see things very differently. And then you come to see that what's happening to you at that time is the best thing that could have happened to you at that time. God is not trying to make you righteous. He's already made it. But you've got to believe it. The greatest work you're ever going to have is the work of believing that you are what God says you are. That you have what God says you have. And then say so. That's simple. That's, that's faith <laughs> as simple as A, B, C, D. You believe it with your heart, you say it with your mouth. I want to say that again. You believe it with your heart, you say it with your mouth. You believe it with your heart, you say it with your mouth. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. There were two revelations that Abraham got from God. Okay, we're going to pray in a moment. The first one is the Bible says he believed that God raises the dead. Let's read it. Romans chapter 4. Let me show it to you. Romans chapter 4, verses 17. Romans 4, 17. He believes that God raises the dead and call it those things. Romans 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, or even God who raised the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So God is calling things that do not exist as though they exist. You get it? So it's not what God is calling. It's how God is calling it. It's not what God is calling. It's how he's calling it. God is calling things that are not as though they were. Look at it. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not. Huh? So, if you need healing to be, what do you do? You call it. Um, it, it it's not in terms that is not physically manifested. It's not physically realized. 
So it's not in existence physically. But God is calling something that is not yet physically present like it's present. So it's not what he's calling, it's how he's calling it. You know why? Because with God, everything is spiritually present. Everything is spiritually real in the spirit. Everything is a reality in the spirit. Healing is a reality. So what do you do? You call it in. You call it in. You call it in because it is true. You call it in because it is real. And that's what you do with the mouth. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Let me tell you this. Your faith will never rise above your confession. Your faith will never rise above your confession. God. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Come on, everybody. Lift up two hands towards heaven. Tonight, talk to him. Hallelujah. Talk to the Lord. He's here in this place. You are what he says you are. You have what he says you have. I'm telling you right now with the organ of the heart, believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. And with the organ of the mouth, confess it. Confess it. Confess it. This is how you mix with faith what you're hearing so that it will profit you. Lord, tonight we give you all the praise and all the thanksgiving, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing here tonight. We give you praise and glory. If I can just have the worshipers back here, the, the musicians back here, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Come on, just lift up those hands. See your sickness laid upon him. See your sickness laid upon him. See your sickness laid upon the Messiah. See it on him. It's not on you, it's on him. See all that poverty on him. It's not on you, it's on him. See the curse on him. It's not on you. You are not cursed. You are blessed. I said you are not cursed. You are blessed. I said you are not cursed. You are blessed. You are not cursed. You are blessed. You are not cursed. You are blessed. And Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Come on, just lift up those hands for a few more minutes. Talk to him tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it's already done. It's finished. It's a finished work. God is just calling you to believe it. I believe, Lord, I believe. I believe the weight of sin has been lifted. The weight of the curse has been lifted. The weight of sickness and disease. I don't have to bear it another moment. Sin will not have dominion over me. Sickness will not rule over me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Lord, have all the praise and all the glory. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And the whole church says amen. I said the whole church says amen. amen. How many of you believe that Jesus has taken your pain? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. All right, people. Tonight, let us worship God with our tithes and offerings. Those of you who are saying, I want to make this church my home church, you are so welcome. We got uh, big plans for America. We got big plans, plans we cannot share now. Because we don't want the devil to upset some things. So we're going to keep the plans hidden from him for now. But we got big plans for America. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For those of you who want to give an offering tonight, you want to tie tonight, you want to bless the Lord for what you've heard tonight, there are several ways that we give our offerings here. If you go to 633movement.com, we have five or six different ways that you can give tonight. Those of you who want to give here in the assembly, we can uh, take your debit card or your credit card. If you want us to do that, just signify by raising up your hand and the uh, ushers will get to you. If you're giving cash or a check, make it out to 633 Movement or 633 Church, whichever one. All right? If you didn't come with any cash and you want to use your credit card, just keep your hands up until they get to you. Praise God. Let's bless the Lord with our finances. All right, let's bless the Lord with our finances. Those of you online, you say, I want to give, go to 633movement.com and go to and, and, and press the word donation. And you see there are five different ways that you can give. We have Venom. We have text giving. We have online giving. We have a P.O. Box address where you can send in your letters and your offerings. God is doing amazing things in this place. Can somebody say hallelujah? 
I said, God is doing amazing things in this place. And this is just the beginning. I said, this is just the beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I can't believe uh, we're already in November and very soon it's going to be December. And um, we're going to have a crossover service here. Uh, a crossover service as we cross over into 2020. So we're going to have a crossover service that night. It's going to be a very powerful night. Uh, looking forward to what God is going to do during the crossover night. Amen. All right. If you have your offerings, just lift it up before the Lord. Let's pray over it. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of giving, the spirit of generosity, the spirit of sacrifice. God, we come tonight offering not only our lives, but our finances. And by the token of these finances, we declare that the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. We shall not want that we have everything that we'll ever need, all that pertains to life and godliness, that through your poverty we have been made rich. So, Lord, we release it with joy. We release it with faith. We give it in excitement tonight. We come before the great king and we say, God, behold our offerings, behold our tithes, God. Behold our, our sacrifices, God. We offer it to you as a living sacrifice. Lord, please receive it now. Use it to further your kingdom. Use it to expand this church. Grow it. And let it be, an, let it be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill in Jackson, in Mississippi, and around the world. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and receive our offerings. While we're receiving that offering, we're going to just pray for you this week, that this week will be an amazing week. It's the beginning of a new week. somebody you've been um, experiencing some pain somewhere in here it's on the um, left side right in here you've been experiencing some serious pain in here if you're that person I want to pray for you right now I don't know if you're in here or you're the one okay two of you two you've been experiencing one two anybody else Experiencing pain right in here, all right? All right. Just go ahead and lay your hand on that side of your body. Come on, church, let's agree with in faith right now. Lord, we rebuke every sickness and every pain in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody has been having migraine headache on the right side of your head, on the right side very strong migraine headache that has been going on for quite some time if you're that person lay hand on that part of your head right now I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus somebody has a bowel problem uh, a bowel problem lay hands on that part of your body right now come on people lay hands on there in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus somebody has been having a serious back problem on your spine on the upper side of your spine very close to your neck are you the one there having that pain okay lay hands on there in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord somebody has been having um, a very sharp pain on the left side of your pelvic on the left side of your pelvic right around here there's been a sharp pain that you've been experiencing lay hands on that part of your body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus if I call out your situation can you stand up and just come out here quickly I want to pray for you if I call out a situation that you are going through it just come out here if I haven't called it out don't come out but if I call it just come out here I want to pray for you Lord Jesus somebody give me my oil
put your hand on that part of your body where the pain is of you watching them just stretch your hands two of them have your way have your way Lord have your way have your way Lord have your way who is that woman with a bowel problem you have a bowel problem Lord, I curse every sickness. I curse every disease. I curse every pain on, on their bodies. From every strand of their hair to the sole of their feet. God, I, I take authority over bone problems. I take authority over diseases of the blood and the bone and the marrow. Of the organs, the eyes, the neck, the spine. The bowels, the lower abdomen, upper abdomen, in the legs, in every part of their body, Lord, I take authority over the pain in their neck right now. By the power of your spirit, out! Get out of their body, get out of their limbs, their joints, get out of their organs. Somebody has been having a heart condition, you've been palpitating. God is healing you of that heart condition right now. If you're that person, join them in this line. I curse every sickness, every pain in the body. Go! Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. I feel the fire in my right hand. I feel the fire in my right hand. This pain. Man of God, somebody stand behind her right now. I feel the pain. is right there, right? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Out you go. Out. In Jesus' mighty name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed of that in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed of that. How often is that migraine headache? How often, how often does it happen to you? Pretty often. Pretty often. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to it. Be completely healed and made whole. In Jesus' name, be completely made whole. Be completely made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Be completely made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Be completely made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Be completely made whole. Be completely made whole. Be completely made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Be completely made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Be completely made whole in Jesus' mighty name. 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 Jesus mighty name, Jesus mighty name, Jesus mighty name. Bara ba yere beleke. You'll stay here with me. I want to pray for those of you watching and you feel like you have an impossible situation. Is there anybody who feels like they have an impossible situation right now and they need a miracle from God? Okay, you? Okay. Anybody else? You feel like you have an impossible situation? All right. So if you don't mind, can you all just come out here? I want to pray for you all right now. Those of online, if you have an impossible situation, identify yourself right now. If you have an impossible situation, I want you to identify yourself right now. God is going to move on your behalf in a very powerful way. Lord Jesus, just come join them down here. Lord, we give you praise and glory. sitting down can you stand on your feet if you can we're gonna just spend can we do 60 seconds in prayer everybody yes let's pray for them right now god every situation that is impossible every impossible situation right now thank you lord thank you lord okay thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord 
you, Lord. Let me have the other hand. The other hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you what God is showing me. The both of you need a door to open like yesterday. A door to open like yesterday. So, Lord, I pray right now for that open door to open for you. Lord, open that door. Key of David, open that door. Key of David, open that door. Key of David, have, have Maru and Ananga. I just felt a wind blow right now. I just felt a wind. Please don't play with this moment. You're standing on holy ground. The angels of the Lord are all over this place ministering to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I see an open door. Key of David, open that door. Come on, we're going to worship for, for some, just for a few more. Inana klabanata le branaka, yerebele ke branata neke brosata. Have your way, Lord, have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way. Reversing impossible situations right now, turning things around right now, turning things around right now. I dare somebody to worship him, I dare somebody to praise him. Key of David, open the door. Key of David, that's the key of praise, that's the key of your worship. Somebody praise him right now, give him a praise. Healings are taking place all over this place in the name of the Lord Jesus. This impossible situation. Lord, I pray, mercy, 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 mercy. Reverse this whole thing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. This burden you're carrying, this weight you're carrying, I break it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is, the Lord is showing me what's going on. Lord is showing me exactly what's happening to you. The Lord is telling me to tell you He's going to strengthen your heart through this process. You just received a terrible news and it has to do with your family. It's in your family. But the God who gives strength will give you strength this too shall pass. God is binding up the broken heart. God is binding up the broken heart. God is binding up the broken heart. This is not the final say. This is not your final story. They may diss you. They may turn their backs on you. They may mock you, laugh at you leave you marato baneke branaka but god is binding up the broken heart mercy lord turn things around for her 
in the name of Jesus this too will pass this too will pass in Jesus mighty name 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 Lord we give you praise and glory Lord open that door that impossible situation open that door open that door open that door woman of God you've poured into so many people and the Lord is telling me to tell you it's time you took care of yourself and don't consider it selfish it's time to take care of yourself to receive ministry God is not through with you he's not done with you something 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 profound is going to happen for you I know it doesn't look like that right now but everything is going to turn in your favor in a moment of time in the twinkling of an eye God is going to turn everything in your favor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus sometimes God gets very specific but those spe those those specifications are things I can't just pronounce like that unless I'm at liberty to um, so we pray for everyone right now who is going through an impossible situation that God is turning this around can somebody say hallelujah by the time by this time next Sunday you'll tell a different story I say by this time this coming Sunday you're gonna tell a different story in Jesus mighty name Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name God has shown me a little kid that is sick a little child that is sick God has shown me a little child it's a girl it's a girl she's a she's not more than four years old she's sick terribly sick and this may be somebody online I pray for that child right now in the name of Jesus be healed we sent forth his word and he healed you and delivered you out of your affliction I see that little girl yes you are actually in a hospital and um, you've got something hooked up to your nose there's a wire hooked up to your nose you're not unconscious you're conscious but you have a sickness in your body Lord heal her now we stretch our hands of faith towards that little child in the name of Jesus you're on a hospital bed please identify yourself the mom identify her in Jesus name we pray for her right now to be healed in Jesus mighty name amen and amen come on let's give the Lord a big clap offering tonight amen amen praise God all right, people, we love you all so much. Help us get the word out. By this time, uh, this coming Sunday is going to be a powerful Sunday night. Those of you who want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in tongues, get ready this Sunday night. There's going to be an outpouring of God's Spirit. Let's see what God is going to do in this place tonight. Can somebody say amen? Amen. All right, people, we finish with our tithes and offering. All right, I want to call my wife to come and close us out in prayer and uh, make a few announcements also. Let us make welcome Dr. Kelly as she comes. Amen. Amen. Was everybody blessed tonight? Were y'all blessed tonight? Praise God. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise tonight. He's awesome. We're just getting started. It's going to be amazing. Uh, deeply grateful. What am I announcing, honey? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to Los Angeles on December 10th. That is a Tuesday night. Don't worry, we won't miss church. Uh, we're going to really, really try our best to be here. So we will be here on Sundays. Um, but for those who want to join us, we'll be having a night of prayer in Los Angeles. It's actually at the Sheraton in Cerritos, California right outside of LA 
Um, we're just going to go wherever the Lord leads us. We're going to do what we know he's called us to do. Amen. So that will be on December 10th. It starts that night at 7. The doors will open at 6. Uh, we love for you all to join us. That information is on 633movement.com and also warriorlife.cc, the night of prayer in Los Angeles and the information. And also we're having our prayer camp in Cleveland, Georgia. It's right outside of Atlanta. Well, not right outside, about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, that will be January the 2nd through the 4th. We believe in starting our year off with God. And so that'll be a Thursday through Saturday. And then on the 5th, we'll be back here in Mississippi for church again. Um, but we had a prayer camp this January, and it was amazing. And I know that much, if not everything, that happened this year was a result of us spending those three days with God. We just believe in, in doing that because that's our way of offering the entire year up to God as a first fruit. And God has blessed us tremendously for doing that. So we want everybody to join us at Woodlands Camp in Cleveland, Georgia. Again, the information is behind me. And also on 633movement.com or warriorlife.cc. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth the travel. It's worth the sacrifice. You know, Georgia's not that far from us. But there'll be people flying in from all over the world to join us there. And we definitely want you all to be a part of that. So go ahead and clear your calendars and just prepare to join us there January the 2nd through the 4th. And let's kick off our 2020 the right way. Amen. Um, I want to thank everybody that came out and joined me for a 5 p.m. prayer today. I think it was amazing. What do y'all think? Um, you know, I made a commitment. I told my husband last. Y'all can turn it down just a little bit, please. Um, I told my husband, uh, well, it had been in my spirit for a couple of weeks to just take charge of the 5 p.m. prayer but I didn't say anything I kind of act like I didn't hear it and then I told my husband a couple days ago I said I think I want to head up the 5 p.m. prayer you know I'm thinking he's gonna say oh boo that's great he said that's fine I'm like you're not gonna get excited but you know you know how men when you excited they don't always be excited so then I text my sister Chanel she said girl yes you better do it you better pray that's the response I actually wanted but in all seriousness I told God that I prayed a prayer this morning, and I'm actually going to talk about it in the morning on the video. So if y'all are watching, act like you didn't hear this in the morning. Um, but I, I've never prayed the prayer before that I prayed this morning. He left and went for a walk. And when he left to go for the walk, I laid in my bed and I cried. And I said, Lord, teach us how to move the nations in prayer. Now, we've been confessing this mandate for years that we will move the nations in prayer. But, you know, I had never asked God to show me how to do that. Sometimes the obvious is kind of obscure. And I said, so, Lord, I want you to teach us how to do it because we actually don't know how to do it. And I just began to cry, and I was like, because I want to see you, and I want to reveal you, and that's all I want. That's it. So show us how to do that. And all I kept feeling in my spirit was drive the 5 p.m. prayer. We're already praying. We're already doing it online. We're already having huge conventions. But I just felt the Lord say, never despise the day of small beginnings. And I made a commitment to God. I said, Daddy, I'm going to show up for 5 p.m. prayer like it's 10,000 people in the room. I said, I'm going to pray like it's 10,000 people in the room because guess what? One day it will be. I said, but if I don't do it now, if I don't take it serious now, and the kids was making me late, I was like, look, y'all need to come on because we got to get to 5 p.m. prayer. And you know we had prayer. I don't know why y'all dragging, but I've already made up my mind beginning next Sunday, I'm going to get here at 4 and spend an hour in prayer preparing for the 5 p.m. prayer to prepare for the 6 p.m. service and we're just going to see what God is going to do. Amen? So I'm really going to, really, I'm, I'm taking it to heart because I know that every mighty move of God it, it flows on the wings of prayer. And I said this in prayer, but I'm going to say it one more time. If you know if you want to know the popularity of a church show up on Sunday morning and count attendance. You want to know the popularity of the preacher? Count the attendance on Sunday night.
But if you want to know the popularity of Jesus, count the attendance at the prayer meeting. And somewhere along the way, in contemporary churches, contemporary Christians, with all the things we have to do, we've, the prayer meeting is like, I don't even in mega churches, it's the least attended. But I believe God's going to use us to change that. I really do. And so I'm going to keep confessing it and believing it and trust that you all are going to join in with us. And together, God is going to teach us how to move the nations in prayer. Amen. So every eye closed. Y'all, let's just pray and bless the Lord for what he has done tonight. Father, we just thank you so much for what you have done tonight. Father, we thank you for the beautiful move of your spirit that we have experienced tonight. Father, we thank you for the praise and the worship that has gone forth. What a solid word that came forth from the man of God tonight. God, we thank you that that word has not fallen on deaf ears, but God, that word has stirred us up to come after you even the more. And Lord, we're deciding tonight as a church family that we want to reveal you. We want to experience you and we want to demonstrate you to this generation and God we're willing to do whatever it takes to experience a true biblical move of your spirit so God we just thank you for all that has been said and done tonight and God we just speak blessings upon everyone who came out tonight to see you and experience you and hear from you Lord you take all the glory we don't take any credit you take glory for the prayer meeting you take the glory for the worship you take the glory for the word you take the glory for the healings and manifestations of your spirit that took place tonight God it is all about you may you forever and alone get the glory so God we love love you and father we praise you and we magnify you and we are so excited that you will even see fit to use us to have any part in the advancement of your kingdom we don't take it lightly father i ask you to release a praying mantle over your people tonight that they'll begin to have difficulties not praying god they'll begin to pray so much that it'll just bubble up god out of them father stir us up in you tonight Father, we speak traveling grace over everyone who will leave this place tonight. God, bring them back here next week on fire for you. Bring them back here running through the door saying, Lord, I praise you and Lord, I bless you. Stir us up, God. That's our heart's desire. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Somebody going to help me? Father, we love you. Father, we love you. We do. We really do. This isn't lip service. God, we really do love you. And we thank you for all you have done. In Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Well, we love you. Make sure you greet two or three people on your way out. I don't know if we have anything at the bookstore out there for you to look at or buy. But we see you this time, um, next time, this, this coming week. Amen. Amen. All right. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. All those online, thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you this time next week. God bless you. Have your